Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Fight Chat Friday from TKD Coach Academy. This week we're going to do another little bit of a comparison video where we're looking at one of the other ITF groups under President Choi jung uh, and who just recently had their World Championships in Amsterdam in the Netherlands and we're going to look at their style of sparring, their scoring and the event in general uh, as a little bit of a comparison to see how that stacks up against what we normally look at from our own federation. So if that's interesting to you, stay with us for this one. Hey everybody, welcome back to Fight Chat Friday. So in this episode, we will be looking at the difference between two ITF groups. Yeah. So for ourselves, we are in a little bit of a different group compared to the World Championships that was on last week in Amsterdam. So we did see some differences from the fights we checked out. So there was a difference in sh uh, shots that were used. There was different sure. in the scoring system, the event, how it's run, and a couple of different things like that. So we're going to give you guys a couple of clips from some final fights and also chat through some differences that we see and maybe you guys can get involved in the comments and discuss the differences the things that maybe are good and bad on each side and maybe if we could merge together some different things from different groups what would you like to see so that's what we'll get stuck in today so maybe just let's start with a quick chat on that scoring system because you know it's really important before we even start to look at things like shot selection or getting an overall impression of it to understand that of the three major ITF groups that are out there, the scoring system, while it was once the same back pre-2002, there, there are slight differences now between the scoring systems. So yeah, yeah let's, let's talk a little bit on that and see what's the major difference for this one. Yeah, well, that's good because a lot of people in our ITF group are calling for the two points jumping punch to come back. And this is a great opportunity for us to see what that would look like. So in the, the World Championships that was on last week in Amsterdam, they have three points for a head kick as far as I'm okay. aware. One for a body kick, which is different to us. We have two. Uh, one for a punch, which is the same as us. But plus one for any jumping technique, which we don't have. So yeah, there's two so that... differences, really they're pretty significant changes and we would expect to see yeah. differences in shot selection on the basis are on the back of that yeah now some people might think there's not a big difference there but it does make a big big difference because it takes away the threat and almost the respect people have for body kicks which allows a little bit more contact with the hands which is something that was very evident from the videos that we did see yeah so let's jump in right away and we'll have a look at the 60 kilo female final uh in the senior division of course and uh, we, sh we should be able to see very, very quickly what the differences are. Yeah, so you can see, like for me, straight off the bat, a lot of people are looking for the jumping punches more, which allows more of like a lunge and a jump in, which um, if, if you're, so you can see here, one example, if you do that, there's like an opportunity for you to absolutely get smashed with a kick to the body. If it's sure. worth two points as well, it's even going to be more. So you can see just a little bit more of a difference in the footwork and in the entry shots. In RITF, for me, the entry shots will usually come off the front leg because yep. at least you have that front leg up to get yourself two points. Whereas I see a lot of entries from the hands in this particular ITF from the fights that we did see. Yeah, so I mean, that definitely stands out to me and the the, the general preference for less of a, a side-facing stance. So we're looking at a, yep. a much more half-facing stance. Uh, giving, I suppose, that option to, well, it, it kind of does diminish the sidekick somewhat. So, like, we're, we're straight away, we're not going to see that direct line cutting sidekick that cuts off so much of the body that's so much more defensive. But what we're seeing is an easier like ability for people to transition, particularly between going directly to hands and bringing in back leg turning kick. Yeah, so they're going to be the two main shots that we've seen, um, which, for me, I think it's... It takes away from a little bit of the the flashy flamboyant kicks that we would like to see a little bit and um, but we do see some glimpses of them here and there but they're not valued as much as i would like and um, one thing as well that is very obvious here is the fact that there is no helmets on both sides so that's one big difference as well yeah and it's we optional it's optional yeah so um the shots then as well and the contacts is a little bit more um, there's a bit more leeway, let's say, from the referees to go to hands and go to contact because it's just a bigger factor of the game in this ITF. I, I mean, the big things that I'm seeing, though, you know, the engagement to hands is 
it, it's a lot more like what you'd have seen back in 2002 and you know in the subsequent years where you know the polish and the czechs and everything were, were quite dominant back at that stage and it was a lot of circling the jumping punch was very valuable and the step to hands was you know uh it, you know still you had all the various kicks and everything but for those who were preferring this kind of style you know it was about getting to the hands getting continuation finishing with the turning kick or the back kick you know that kind of thing and yeah. i i think when we uh you know we can see that there it is being let flow and that's that's quite it nice is. to see you know yeah yeah and we can see like the distances further out that people are engaging from hands but because the point we made earlier the fact that the body kick is only worth one yeah that people generally don't have the correct tools to defend with body kicks such as um, straight line side kicks and things that are going to cause big damage if you enter from too far with the hands. So then because of that, it kind of nullifies it almost. So it kind of goes back to uh, an entry versus an entry with hands usually because it's very hard to defend with a front leg turning kick, for example, to defend hands coming in like we've just seen here. Absolutely. So it, it, takes, it takes away the option to actually defend and have a big threat of somebody trying to come into that from that big distance i'm noticing as well an awful lot in this particular fight that we're uh you know both fighters are using a change of legs to deny that turning kick or to enable that turning kick so you can see how often both sides change legs and we just won't see that in our itf uh mm. you know at all like a person will have yeah, I'm a right-legged fighter. I'm going to go to the right leg and I'll only end up with the left leg in front if it's after recovering from a back kick or a spin or something along those lines. And so the, the rationale behind that seems to be exactly as you're saying there. Okay, if, if the front leg isn't going to stop me going to hands anyway, I just need to have a same side facing, so right leg in front, right leg in front to let me get that finish that I'm looking for to get the, uh, you know, the, the, the value shot on the end. So... Yeah, yeah. Winner Natalia Matrella from Argentina in that case. So yeah, so we've seen that the the winner actually there was a bit of a delay. Why? Because yeah. there's not live scoring in this ITF. So for us, we have live scoring throughout um, on the scoreboards, very evident and visible for everybody to see. I'm up, I'm down. This is how long is left. I've this this many warnings. So that is another big factor that we see. So I think the value of a warning then becomes even more important when you have live scoring because you can see the visual impact it makes on the scoreboard. Whereas mm. in this ITF, we have pen and paper in the corner judges. So I think that first off impacts the, the scores that are visible because it's not as fast as clicking a button. So you need to get For those sure. big shots to, to get the, the score down on paper. And of course, there's an opportunity then for you to miss continuation shots, depending on the experience of the referee, of course. Yeah, and I mean, I think the big difference between it being live and it being, you know, a continuously judged match that at the end you get the result, you never get the score. You never yeah. know if you never really know if you're ahead or behind. So the the incentive has always been, well, just keep going, just keep throwing mm -hmm. shots. And, you know, that can actually have the effect of, you know, leveling out matches. It can have the effect of um, giving people the impression that what they're doing is effective, even if it isn't. There's no way externally to know if what you're doing is working or yeah. what you're getting rewards for. So it may well be that people are just going on their experience. Of, well, usually I do this and this usually works. Um, very often, like the, the feedback isn't there. So they can't adjust on the fly to what is effective or ineffective. So it is yeah. making it does change things. Like, I don't know how many times we've been to championships and there's a conversation on the outside between people okay in this ring they're they fancy this where they, yeah. they're, they're a fan of sidekicks in this ring they're a fan of hands in this ring whereas you get that instant feedback of what the judges are scoring whereas Absolutely. you don't get that and i there's a plus and a minus to that obviously um but as well in terms of the the live scoring in terms of the last maybe 30 seconds some people may say but if you don't know the score there's continuous action okay possibly but mm. also if there's a match close it forces somebody to go and get it if the match isn't like absolute whitewash or somebody's getting destroyed there's going to be a good last 30 seconds where both people are trying to get to that level to switch the score back and forth absolutely so I think that, yeah i think that that's a, actually a, a problem that people think may come from the live scoring but which isn't the case yeah absolutely so let's have a look at the boys we'll have a look at the 70 kilo final and have a a, a quick kick off there so 
we actually know Paul as well. It's kind of fair to say uh, we, we've, we've certainly uh, uh, had Paul in many of our competitions. Uh, so well-known competitor to us. We're not completely in the dark on this one. Yeah, so I think that actually like people that are have the experience of both sides, actually we can see then Paul is a bit more side-facing. So I think that like you can have a nice hybrid to this style as well, which is important to note. Well, that's it. And, you know, a good ring awareness there from Paul, you know, making sure he holds yeah. his ground and, you know, uh, keeping his opponent in that unfavorable position towards the edge. And we can see him using that sidekick, you know, that defensive shot that we'd be so familiar with on our own side of things as well. So, yeah, there's definitely a, a little bit of crossover being shown here from Paul. Yeah, that's what we mentioned in the earlier clip. The fact that the further distance is available, that he's able to pick people off and be a real threat then on the defensive side, which allows him to have his opponent second guessing which then sets up the hand so it's a nice twofold way a nice little strategy that he has yeah and you know again the distance he's creating a little bit of a uh, space pressure which you know in in some of the other matches i watched there wasn't as much regard for the spacing in the ring and for the warnings yeah. in particular and i th you know for me that's a big throwback to before the scoreboards and paul spars in our tournaments quite a bit and it's live scoring that we use of course and the warnings have that big impact but like mm -hmm. He's very, very conscious of his position in the ring. He's keeping that central position and forcing his opponent towards the edge. And, uh, you know, the thing is, it's very hard to know what's happening in the scoring. His opponent is certainly picking up a lot of warnings. But what we don't know is, are these big scores or are these low scores? And what are the judges seeing? And how much credit are they giving for the many hands and punches that are being thrown? Yeah, the hands sometimes are a little bit wild as well, um, not just in this match, but in, in, across the board. So um, it's hard to know our judges scoring these or not. Um, so I'd actually like to know if they are. But we see as well that there's a little bit more of, a, let's say, the, the rhythm from Argentina and blue here as well is a bit different, whereas there's not as much bouncing and footwork. I think that that's maybe a result of that little bit of a further distance. And as well, the fact that there's no real um, pressure of the live scoring that you can just almost settle unless there's there's a big emphasis for you to go maybe your coach is shouting or whatever there's there's more opportunity for you to kind of just relax and pick the moments um so you, you can see a, a little bit less um in, intention let's say with the, with the footwork on some of the competitors yeah definitely and uh, you know what's quite interesting as well is uh, you know we see a slightly different strategy from paul here like as his opponent comes to hands in most of the other matches that we've watched, they'll, you know, the, the, the preference is to stand and trade and look to get the finishing shot. And Paul conceding ground, it shows the difference in shot between the blitz that we'd be very familiar with, where Paul couldn't just lean back and bring the front hand in. He'd have to change his line as well because the body would come through and he'd be bumped. But, you know, in this case, most of the time his opponent is only stepping as far as the front foot. And then the feet are, are planted. So he's able to make a, a little bit of value, a little bit different in this case, and he's been bumped, you know. But in most mm -hmm. of those interactions, he's ended up being able to just kind of take a little bit of a lean or a shift back and bring the front hand to bear as his opponent runs out of steam. Yeah, I think it shows the importance of uh, being able to go across multiple disciplines and multiple um, like types of combat as well. We see that in our own ITF. The guys who are doing wacko and things like that are able to transition quite well. So like the more experience you have in combat, the, the better it is for you in the long run, I think. And I think that that's very evident here. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but even just, you know, the, this, the, the thing that we didn't see in the, the ladies match where right versus right or left versus left and a turning kick being thrown, we'd have expected to see the back kick come in a bit or the reverse turning kick and Paul scores two of them in that match. Mm. Uh, you know, so nice to see that the, the same principles apply. You know, you still have that, you know, opportunity to counter the, uh, the round shot with a straight shot, you know, and go through the middle, you know, to, to go over a lower shot, to go under a higher shot, you know, all those same principles apply. So it's no great change up, you know, for us to look at that and say, oh yeah, I see what we could do if we were sparring in that system. The rule changes are so small. I actually think the 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 presence of the scoring and the, the live scoreboard is a bigger deal than the difference in the, uh, okay. you know, in terms of shaping how the game is being played rather than the, you know, the 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 one three and the plus one uh in the scoring system so you know the plus one does kind of make jumping punches more of a thing for sure there's no question but it yep, wouldn't yep. it wouldn't entice you to throw a jumping front leg kick or you know you're not going to yeah, you're not yeah. going to kick differently because of it like the headshot is still a big deal but if you're thinking well hang on i can much more easily get into hands and, and trade that seems good 
but it only yeah, seems some... good. I don't know if it is good until you see the scoreboard. Yeah, you don't know. I think it's, it's from some little clips that I've seen as well, the, on countering spinning kicks, the little small little jump off the ground is a bigger thing because yeah. you get the, the bonus point for it. So people are, are more inclined to uh, do like a jumping back reverse or jumping back kick as a counter as opposed to just standing their ground. Yeah, yeah. It might incentivize people maybe to try rather than, let's say, dropping back and taking a hook kick off the front leg. You know, you might just try that switch or something like that, you know, to... Uh, to give it a go what about the event as a whole like we're, we're watching just the finals uh, effectively here and most of what we've yeah. watched has been finals but you know are there a few things that you saw that you think yeah we can borrow from this into our itf what did you like yeah well you can see there in the in the last clip the the let's say the, the fight poster the the graphic X versus y or whatever it is yeah. that's, that's cool that's something nice to have and it keeps people engaged in the in the stadium as well um, and I think they had those up before the event, even for their first round. So that's something different and something good. Um, I, I'm aware as well that there's a, I think there was a DJ in the event, which oh, is something cool. different. Yeah. Even while people were competing and stuff like that. So that is something that we haven't seen before. Um, I don't know how that played I, out. Or yeah, at galas, we'd usually or, have it as a, as a, in the fight ga or in the, the finals galas, but maybe not during the event yeah. as a whole. Even during, during the, the okay. sparring bouts, let's say. So, yeah, that's something different. Um, anything else that you spotted? Well, it's just the the thing of, like you said, it's linked to that uh, poster, the tail of the tape thing, that when you go back and you look at the fact that there's no helmet, the fighters are identifiable. You know, so you, okay, can, okay, yeah. you can relate to that fighter because you can see them, you can see their face, and it kind of adds the whole thing. And then that linked with the, the likes of the fight poster of the tail of the tape uh, visual graphic, I think is nice. You know, it's, it, it's very, very nice to be able to see all of that. So you're you're very much aware of who this person is who's won. And I think for us, okay, the helmet's a fixture, it's not going to go anywhere. But being able to see that graphic of the person so you can actually relate a human being to the white and blue or white and red mannequin in the ring, you know, it would yeah. be it would be really, really good. No, that's, that's true. It brings a bit more light to the, the sport as well and gives people the personalities and the characters, which is always good as well. Exactly. I did think it was quite nice as well. They had it set up with the particular company uh, that, that, that that was doing some of the streaming and, you know, and the reporting afterwards, um, you know, that they, the winners were going straight to an interview. And I mean, if, we've certainly done that before in the past, but it was quite a nice touch to have it, you know, immediately afterwards, as you would in any major sporting event. You know, you, you, you've won your match, you go straight, you give your interview. Um, you know, and and we've had a few t a few times too many in the past where you win your event, congratulations! Now you need to go to anti doping and pee in a cup. So yeah, uh, yeah. it'd be nicer to have the you know the interview and the, the few words for the fans before you have to go pee in the cup. So yeah, the live stream was pretty good as well, wasn't it? With the graphics and who's who and stuff like that keeps you yeah. informed. Yeah. So yeah, I think there's a, a lot of takeaways to go on both sides. If there was anything that you found interesting, if you're from a different ITF group and you have any comments to make or something we messed up on or missed, let us know in the comments. We'll have a bit of dialogue there um, and we hope you enjoyed this one. Very good. Richie, just before we leave then, what's in store for our members this week? All right, so this week we're looking at a session that we did this week ourselves. So anybody who wants to train with us and see what our training is like, get over there to the member section, check out our channel page and look for the join button. and You can get involved there on what we are doing in our own sessions. Excellent. So until next Friday, we'll see you then. See you next.